what is uh, the Obama administration doing right when it comes to ISIS? Are they doing anything right to stem that or contain that threat? I think you, you have to first understand that this is a very difficult problem, yeah. as I've already stated, and, and it is uh, one that we've really never seen before. And there are so many cultural, tribal, historic dimensions to it that we can't control. That's the other part of this. We're seeing a world now with more uncontrollables than we've ever seen, certainly in the Middle East, certainly when we're dealing with ISIS. You've got Turkey's interests, Syria's interests, Russia's interests, Iran's interests, Saudi Arabia's interests, our interests, NATO's interests, and those don't always coincide. So uh, this administration has been uh, having a difficult time grapple uh, with that, and, and it's something that I talked about that I... Uh, thought that we didn't have a, a good strategy uh, on, on uh, Syria, it's starting with Syria and dealing with ISIS because they're all uh, interconnected. But you, you need to come up with a larger framework of a political settlement. You, you can't just start with a military focus. Uh, the military is part of that, but, but that has to follow a political strategy. How are you going to solve this problem? I mean, you can continue just to kill people and destroy things what we're doing now, get deeper into proxy wars, which we're doing now, that isn't going to solve it. It's going to make it worse, make the world more dangerous, make the threats to the United States worse. So um, the next president is going to have to make this a, a top priority uh, because it's, and it's not all President Obama's fault. There are a lot of dimensions to, to this. Is ending the war in Syria the key to stemming ISIS or the war in Iraq? I, I think, uh, I think, Bringing some platform of still stability to Syria um, is key. Now, there are other dimensions to it, as I've already uh, mentioned. Uh, we're not going to see this resolved or solved anytime soon in the Middle East. I mean, look at Libya, look at Yemen, look at Iraq, Lebanon, Syria. You go across the Middle East. Uh, many of these countries are non-functioning. They don't have any governments, literally. So you've got to bring some stability first. That means uh, a ceasefire. Uh, it'll be imperfect, absolutely. But you're going to have to work with everybody here. You, you're going to have to work with Iran and, and Russia uh, and, and all of the players. Uh, you don't need to agree with them on everything, but focus on the common interest, the common threat that we all face. We all have different ways to do it. And, and then if you can get a ceasefire, some element of stability, you can start working on sorting out solutions and, and, and resolutions. But this will have to be done by the people of the region. We can't dictate that. We should have learned that lesson very clearly from our invasion and occupation of Iraq in 2003. Uh, when it comes to fighting that extended war, that war in the Middle East, uh, do you think now that the prisoner swap for Bo Bergdahl was a mistake? No, that's a totally different kind of situation. And I, I was the one that recommended it, actually, yeah. Secretary of Defense. L let's start with who we are uh, as Americans and what is and has been the tradition of the American military. Uh, we have never left soldiers behind. We're still going into North Korea, or not North Korea, but the Korean Peninsula, and working with North Korea, trying to recover the remains of Americans killed in the Korean War. Vietnam, we have large offices set up to bring those remains back. Uh, no, it was the right thing to do. And the point was, no one knew for sure what Bergdahl's situation was. There were a lot of rumors floating around. He had deserted it, and so on. But nobody knew. The point being, and it was exactly the process has worked. We got our soldier back. And by the way, he'd, he'd been over there uh, for five years in very brutal captivity, isolation, beat. And uh, we were concerned that eventually they were just going to kill him because we wouldn't we would negotiate a ransom or money, which they, they wanted. Prisoner swaps are, uh, are part of the history of our, of our military, of our country. That's not new. But you bring your soldier back. Then when the soldier is back, then you find out what happened. He's being court-martialed. It's the process. Let the process work. Uh, he may be found innocent. He may be found guilty. I don't know. But we made the right choice here. We made absolutely the right decision. Last point, if you're in the military, and there were strong emotional feelings in the military with the men and women who served in Afghanistan, who served in Iraq war, uh, both ways on this. But if you're in the military, I think you want to be assured that our military uh, w will come find you. We will do everything we can to get you within the boundaries of responsible government. And uh, that's what we did. No, I don't think it was a mistake. I think it was exactly the right thing to do. And I defended it uh, before Congress. 
Uh, we need to wrap this up. Okay. Uh, last question. A concern in Bellevue about the possibility of Offutt Air Force Base possibly moving, given the condition of the runway. What should people know about how things operate within the Pentagon uh, going forward? Well, I have uh, always taken the position, when I was a United States Senator from Nebraska, yeah. uh, as I did Secretary of Defense, that um, our defense facilities should be about one thing, the defense of this country. Our budgets for defense should be about the security of America. And if a facility cannot justify why they're open, then there needs to be an adjustment. On STRATCOM's particular case, um, uh, it has proven over a, over a long time, many years, that it is a very valuable asset uh, to this country. But you're constantly reviewing the people in charge of our national security. It's not the Congress. It, it's the first line of defense are the people at the Pentagon, the men and women who spend 35 years of their lives in uniform as selfless uh, devotion and sacrifice as any Americans uh, we have based on their recommendations, what they think. Now, there's oversight. The Congress has that responsibility. The President does. But I don't think there's any magic or lobbying effort that you can put forward. Um, I think it stands, uh, in my opinion, very clearly uh, on its own that uh, it's been and, and I believe will continue to be a very important part of our national defense system. Now, the runway, uh, we've, got, we've got runway problems all over the world. Uh, we've got maintenance facility problems all over the world in every one of our bases. So the Offutt situation is not particularly different or new than uh, other places. But I can also tell you and assure you that all the decision making that I saw in the Pentagon and the recommendations, and certainly this is the way I played, but I also saw it top down in every service. Every recommendation was made not on politics, not on lobbying, but was made on the basis of what's in the interest of our country, the national security interest of our country. That's as it should be. All right, Secretary Hagel, thanks for joining us. Thank you.